So NVIDIA has been on an absolute tear over the past two years, having established themselves as the premier GPU provider for AI, specifically when it comes to generative AI and training large language models. Over the past two years, we've really seen the development of an AI arms race where big tech companies are investing massively into building out their AI capabilities to try and carve out some competitive advantage. And NVIDIA's H100 GPU has become the gold standard for this. Basically, any company that is taking AI seriously has to have as many of these as they can get their hands on because they're able to train large language models much faster than anything else out there. And they're also coming out with a new chip called Blackwell within the next year. And NVIDIA has been the biggest reason why the market overall has done so well over the past two years. As we can see from their market cap here going from $400 billion at the start of 2023 all the way up to 3.2 trillion currently. So roughly $2.6 trillion worth of new wealth has been created for investors just from this one company, right? And this doesn't just benefit NVIDIA investors themselves, but also anyone who owns this company indirectly through index funds. In fact, it's solely responsible for over a third of the S&P 500's roughly 18% return year to date. So in this video, I wanna answer the question, how much is Nvidia actually worth on a per share basis given reasonable assumptions for the future growth potential of this business. Obviously there is a lot of hype built into this company right now. So what we tend to see in these scenarios is stock prices could deviate away from what actually makes sense for the given company. So I wanna take an unbiased and objective look at this company to find out if that's actually the case or maybe the company is actually reasonably valued even after it's gone up so much recently. And I think even if you're not invested in NVIDIA directly, you probably have a sizable stake in the company through index funds that you own because as we can see, they currently make up about 7% of the S&P 500. So I thought it'd be very useful to show you guys how you would actually go about valuing a company like this, a company that has seen such massive growth in such a short period of time and still, to be honest, has quite an uncertain future ahead of them. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. So doing this involves projecting the future financial results for NVIDIA. And there's four key aspects of this valuation that I wanna talk about in more depth. And that is number one, their future revenue growth rate. Number two is their operating margin. Number three is the exit multiple or the terminal multiple that we use. And then lastly, there is the discount rate that we use. So since we are making projections here, they are going to turn out wrong. No one can ever predict what a company is going to do absolutely perfectly. But our goal is to try and get as close to reality as we possibly can by understanding what's a reasonable expectation for the future of NVIDIA. And of course, everyone's gonna have different opinions on what they think that's going to be. And again, we're not trying to predict the future to a T, but the goal of this video is to try and show you what type of assumptions are currently being priced into NVIDIA at their current valuation. So the information sources we can use to draw our projections from, there are many of them, but here are three of the most common ones. So number one is management's guidance, right? What guidance has management given for their company? The second one is analyst estimates. And then the third one is what I'll call the historical record. So when management gives out guidance, usually you can reasonably trust that because no one understands the company better than management does. And they are incentivized to actually give accurate guidance because they actually want investors to listen to them and to take their word for it. But it's also important to distinguish between management guidance and management goals because management goals are usually much longer term in nature and they're far more uncertain and they're not really something that they're expecting investors to hold them to they're kind of proclaiming that this is where our head's at and this is what we're trying to achieve say five years ten years into the future whereas management's guidance is something that they actually want investors to hold them to and it's usually something shorter term in nature like next quarter or at most next fiscal year so then when it comes to using analyst estimates as a potential source of information for making projections projections about a company like say NVIDIA. And by the way, that's what I have on the screen here. These are the consensus analyst estimates on things like revenue, EBITDA, operating income, all the way out into the year 2029 for NVIDIA specifically. So personally, I don't look at this at all, right? And the reason is because first off, who even are these analysts? Why do we care about their opinion so much? Well, really what we're looking at here is just the collective opinions of about five, 10, maybe 15 analysts that have been assigned to cover companies that are employed by large financial institutions. And these same financial institutions 
offer other services to public companies like investment banking services, commercial loans that actually finance these businesses, cash management stuff, all kinds of things. And I find it kind of hard to believe that a bank would allow an analyst to be, say, very bearish about a particular company if that same bank also has a loan to that company, right? It seems like a surefire way to lose business to me. And also consider that analysts aren't ever going to make a prediction that is too far outside of the consensus for a particular company, because if they do do that and they end up being wrong about their prediction, they're going to look pretty bad. They're going to look pretty silly. And analysts at the end of the day are just normal people who don't want to lose their jobs. So they're not going to do anything too risky like that. But nonetheless, analyst estimates are a valid source of information that you can look at. And lastly, the best Best method, in my opinion, is the historical record. And this literally just involves looking at management's commentary over past years and past quarters about what historically has influenced their business, what has led to revenue going up or going down or margins going up or going down, and to look at that and understand how those factors are going to play going out into the future. And that's primarily what I'm going to do throughout this video. Okay, so let's start with projecting NVIDIA's revenue growth over the next five years. So here is a chart showing what NVIDIA's annual revenue has been going all the way back to the year 2002. And as we can see here, it was actually stagnant for a number of years. If we look at 2008, pretty much until 2013, there wasn't really a whole lot of revenue growth until we get to about 2016 here. So 2016 until about 2020, and that's when demand really started to pick up. And the reason for this was because of demand from things like gaming and also cryptocurrency mining, which were both becoming increasingly popular. And then obviously last year and kind of the year before that, demand really started to explode when companies started to invest in their AI capabilities and NVIDIA had their H100 chips, which were built perfectly for that. And this kind of highlights what NVIDIA's strategy has always been, which is to create tailored products for niche markets that allow them to charge much higher prices. And they had actually been developing their AI chips for a number of years before last year when demand really started to take off. So once it finally did, they had essentially captured lightning in a bottle. Now, NVIDIA has two segments they report. There is compute and networking, which encompasses their AI and autonomous driving products, and also graphics, which is graphics cards for gaming. And what's driving their revenue now is primarily demand from big tech companies for their chips. NVIDIA's chips are the best on the market for things like generative AI and training large language models. They can process data much faster. They're much more efficient than anything else out there on the market. And the rumor is that these chips cost about $1,000 each to design and manufacture, and they're selling them for about $30,000 each. So a massive markup on these chips. But what comes with this is that their revenue is highly concentrated into a few big customers. It's estimated that roughly 40% of their revenue is just coming from Meta, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. So basically the big cloud providers and companies that are really investing heavily into artificial intelligence. And then you also have other companies like OpenAI and Tesla that are not too far behind. So ultimately what's going to drive NVIDIA's revenue growth going forward is companies continuing to make these investments into to AI. So the risk with this is that if these companies decide to start to slow down their investment into AI, then NVIDIA's revenue growth is going to go down along with it. Now, obviously the general census right now is that that's not going to happen anytime soon, but the reality is that these companies are going to need to see some return on their investment in order to keep investing, right? And whether that's one year in the future, three years in the future, or even 10 years in the future, it's gonna happen at some point and no one really knows when that day is gonna come yet. And that's why I think there is still quite a lot of uncertainty built into NVIDIA at its current valuation, despite the historically strong performance that they've had. And interestingly, even NVIDIA themselves have acknowledged in their financial reports that the long-term trajectory is unknown, which is kind of an unusual thing for a company to say. So what I decided to do was take the census estimates for the future market sizes for each market that NVIDIA is in, which is the gaming GPU market, autonomous driving market, and then obviously the big one, the AI chip market, and then project what I think those market sizes will approximately be out into the future, take what we think NVIDIA's market share of that is going to be, and then we kind of get a implied amount of revenue 
five years out into the future, which is going to be fiscal year 2029. And again, their biggest revenue driver is the AI chips and estimates of the size of this market vary greatly because again, like I said, it's still somewhat uncertain how big this market is actually going to be. And estimates range anywhere from the $200 billion to the $400 billion range. So I decided to go somewhere in the middle, but more on the optimistic side and go a market size of $350 billion and then take a 80% market share for NVIDIA. Now this 80% market share may seem high, but it's actually slightly less than what it stands at currently, which is around 88% as an estimate. So with all that in mind, their revenue growth will probably look something like this, high revenue growth into the next year at 90%, but then some tapering off as the years go on and the market starts to mature a little bit, reaching to a point where they have about $325 billion of revenue by fiscal year 2029. Okay, so that's revenue. Next, let's move on to profitability or specifically trying to project this company's operating margin. Now, what's important to understand about NVIDIA is they don't actually manufacture their chips. Their manufacturing is outsourced to Taiwan Semiconductor. They just do the design aspect of their chips and they're actually a pretty asset light business overall. So to project this out, we'll first start by looking at their gross margin. And this has expanded rapidly over the past few quarters because they've been able to raise the prices on their GPUs so much just simply due to the demand for them. Now they did give guidance in their most recent filing which says that they expect gross margin to be in the mid 70% range for fiscal year 2025, which indicates maybe gross margin has reached its peak level because this is the level it was at in the most recent quarter as well after having gone up pretty much quarter after quarter. So I would expect gross margins in the future to look like this, mid 70s for the next year, but then some leveling off again as demand starts to normalize from the level it's at now and Nvidia maybe is forced to drop their prices slightly. And this is still very high relative to what it's historically been in, but I think that this is a conservative assumption just given the natural assumption that markets tend to mature as time goes on. So next let's look at operating expenses. So their operating expenses are really two main ones. There is R&D expense and then selling a general and admin expense. And as we can see here comparing these to revenue and what that has been on a quarterly basis, these expenses have gone up over the years but at a significantly slower rate than revenue has gone up, especially over the past year and a half. And if you've ever heard the term operating leverage before this is what that refers to. Now they did say in their most recent quarterly report that these expenses are increasing largely just due to employee growth and compensation increases and that they're expecting operating expenses to grow in the low 40% range for fiscal year 2025. So I would expect operating expenses to look something like this 40% growth in OPEX next year and then SG&A expenses grow at about 15% per year going forward while research and development grows at a much faster rate at 50% but then there's some tapering off in this as the years go on and R&D is just the cost of doing business for NVIDIA. They have to keep innovating to stay ahead of the curve and maintain their competitive advantage. If they stop this investment then it's only a matter of time before some other company catches up. They have to keep investing in this to build out new products that customers actually want and this means that their operating margins will likely be over the next five years in the low 60% range to high 50% range. So the next thing we have to do is determine what is a reasonable terminal multiple to use for NVIDIA. Now the most commonly used terminal multiple is the enterprise value to EBITDA multiple. And my preferred method for determining what a reasonable multiple is to use is to look for companies that are in a similar stage of their life cycle now that we are projecting NVIDIA to be in in the future. Now with NVIDIA that is pretty difficult because they really are a unique company. There's not many other companies out there that are comparable to NVIDIA. But what I decided to do was look for other large, highly profitable tech companies that are still growing relatively fast, kind of in that 20% annualized revenue growth range. Because if you'll recall from our revenue projections from before, in the final year we had NVIDIA growing at about 20%. So what we have here is Meta as one comparable company and then Microsoft as well. And then I also included Broadcom here and then NVIDIA themselves for reference. So Meta year over year grew revenue 13%, whereas Microsoft was 17%. So for companies that are growing revenue in the mid-teens range, they generally have EV to EBITDA multiples 
of 20 to 25, right? So since we're projecting 20%, I'd feel safe using the higher end of that range. So personally, I think a 25X multiple for NVIDIA is more than reasonable. And remember the general way you can determine multiples is just based on the future growth rates that are expected. So companies that are expected to grow faster will have higher multiples. And lastly, we have the discount rate. So for this, I'm just going to use a 12% discount rate because this rate ensures that the company will only look undervalued to us if we are projecting a market beating return, right? And historically a 12% annual return is enough to outperform a basic US index fund. So let's put every Everything together now. Now keep in mind there were other elements that I put into this valuation model so if you'd like to explore those as well I have put this full Excel file on my Discord channel. Link is in the description of that if you are interested. But based on the assumptions that I talked about, if we ultimately go to the bottom here, we get a value per share of about $125 versus a current share price for NVIDIA of $129. So ultimately, my conclusion here would be it doesn't actually seem like this company is overvalued. In fact, it's probably about fairly valued at this current price, which is interesting because I've noticed many investors boldly proclaim claiming that NVIDIA is either grossly overvalued or I've seen the polar opposite where they're saying it's still undervalued after this massive run up. The reality to me seems to be more this current valuation just makes sense for where it's at. But also keep in mind, our assumptions underlying this are very optimistic. We basically assumed that the AI chip market would grow to $350 billion in total size, and NVIDIA would still have an 80% market share of that. So that basically assumes that none of the competition can get anywhere close to NVIDIA over the next five years, which again, it could happen, but it is a pretty optimistic assumption overall. And it also assumes that the other segment, say autonomous driving, grows to about $115 billion in size and Nvidia is able to attain a 15% market share of that and then also continued growth in the gaming and GPU market. So all of these put together, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities, but again, this basically assumes that Nvidia continues to fire on all cylinders and nothing goes wrong at all in the business. And the biggest risk I see in this is this one here, the big one which is the investment into AI chips, right? Two years ago, no one was really talking about this. And now we're basically expecting AI to change the world. So again, there's no guarantee that this can actually happen, but I do see it within the realm of possibilities. Now, one last thing I'd like to point out with NVIDIA here, and this is for those of you that maybe feel like you've missed this massive run-up that we've seen in NVIDIA here. NVIDIA, like all companies, has had their ups and downs throughout their history. In fact, if we go back to 2018 and this time period here, which in their stock price now looks like basically nothing, but as we can see here, over a matter of weeks, NVIDIA lost roughly 50% of its market value. And I feel like some retail investors have just gotten used to seeing NVIDIA going up 2% or 1% almost on a daily basis that when it falls by, say, 4%, they start freaking out. So stocks are volatile, right? And you got to be ready to deal with volatility like this, which is easier when you have a true understanding of the business and the market and you have some real conviction behind your decision to invest in the company in the first place and not just investing in it because it went up a lot historically. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. So if you did enjoy this video and you got some value from it, then please leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.